Why do we count? We learn to count because we often need to compare two amounts or sizes, first asking if they are the same, and if not, asking which one is more so that we know how to make them the same. Counting lets us do this by comparing without having to move the things to the same place at the same time. Here's an example. Let's say I have a bunch of tiny rocks, and I just came up with a game to play with my friend Susie. The game is to try to hit some bigger thing, maybe a big rock with the tiny rocks, and see who can do it first. Now, if we just start throwing rocks, this doesn't feel very fun. We start throwing too quickly, focusing on our own rock throwing, so there's no way to tell who actually wins without getting another friend to watch us play instead of playing whatever game they want to. So we take turns, where every time I'm throwing a rock, Susie is watching to see if I hit the big one, and every time Susie throws a rock, I watch. Now comes the comparing. Let's say I take my bunch of tiny rocks and give Susie and myself each a handful of them to use for our turns. But now, if I have more tiny rocks than Susie, she'll complain that I have more chances, and if she has more than me, I'll complain that she has more chances. We want to make the game fair, so we should each have the same amount of tiny rocks, and if we don't have the same amount, we need to agree who has more tiny rocks, so we can take one away from them to try to make the handfuls the same. How do we compare them? Well, the simplest way is to pair up our handfuls of tiny rocks. This is where Susie and I each take a tiny rock at the same time from our handfuls and put them to the side, pairing those two together in a way. If we get through both our piles at the same time by pairing them up like this, then we have the same chances. But if instead we have to stop pairing, say because my handful ran out of rocks to pair, while well, Susie still has some left, then she has more rocks than me, and we have to get rid of those extras to give us the same chances. Counting does this in a better way. Here's how. First, I count up my rocks, one, two, three, four, which is like pairing my rocks with imaginary rocks that I've named in order. Then Susie can count up her rocks, one, two, three, four, five, which paired her rocks with the same first four imaginary rocks, but then had one extra rock to pair with. So we agree to put her fifth rock back in the pile, and we play the game knowing we have the same chances. One thing we've gained by counting is that it can be much faster. With practice and a few tricks, you can count quickly, because you're pairing with imaginary things. So once you learn to imagine quickly, you can count quickly. Another thing we've gained is that pairing our real rocks is now in two separate steps. I could count up my handful while I'm in one class, and Susie count up hers in a different class, different time. And we meet up later, with or without our rocks, to talk about how many imaginary rocks we were able to pair with. Before, we had to be pairing the real rocks together in the same place at the same time, which also took longer because we move the actual rocks as we pair them. So that's why we learn to count.